Hello, welcome Region 26 middle school students who are auditioning for the Region Band Music this year. Especially hello to my students at Henry Middle School and Cedar Park Middle School in the Leander School District and also to your directors. Thank you for having me over last Friday night to do your master class and work with your saxophonist. It was a, a very fun time and I, I appreciate being there and I met a lot of nice students and I hope we got a lot of things learned. Number one from set A is number one has a tempo ad libitum. Uh, the temp, it appears that there's an O missing, so don't worry about that, but ad libitum with the tempo mark quarter note equals 60 to 80. Well, ad libitum means at the performer's discretion or at the performer's pleasure. Therefore, it's really wide open where you want to go with this. So it's not a really strict time that you want to keep. And this is a very lyrical etude. And so really it's asking for some tempo changes as you go through. A little bit of slowing down, a little bit of moving ahead trying to really emulate what's going on in the music to create that tension and that excitement. So my tempo is somewhere around a quarter note equals about 76. It uh, goes a little faster at times and it goes a little bit slower. There's just a couple of technical things here that we want to talk about and then we're going to go talk about the musical thing because there's a lot of musical things we talk about. There's really just a couple of rhythmic things that you need to be very careful with and these occur in major two and in major four. Uh, and what really is measure one, two, and three, four. You have a tied note that goes over the measure line. And with this, the tendency is often to anticipate moving into those next 16th notes. So it's very, very important here that you concentrate where the downbeat is and where that tide is held over and move after that downbeat. So we get this and you can give yourself <laughs> Just making sure that you have and are very consciously thinking about where that downbeat is before you move on to that through that 16th note passage. Now this next rhythm is not extremely complicated, uh, but it looks a little bit different if you've not seen it before. And on beats two and two in both measures two and four, we get this little different subdivision. We get an eighth note in the middle of the 16th note run. And really just think of the beginning. 2E, because it's really the articulation pattern is just 2E at the beginning of this beat. So keep your 16th note subdivision going, and at the end of this beat, we just get this. 2E and L1. 2E, L1. Musically, there's a couple of different directions this piece is going to. Essentially, it's divided into two, with the first section being centered and always going back to our, our uh, tonal center point of C. But at the end, our tonal center point changes to A minor instead of C major. And you can hear this, and it's actually, it goes back and forth. And the big difference here is the G natural and the G sharp, because the G sharp wants to lead to A, but when it's not there, it doesn't want to. But you can also see that we have our tonal goals. Take a look in measure seven, eight, uh, nine, major nine, the downbeat of one, our main goal here for our first long phrase is C. It's going to C natural. Then go down just below that to measure 16, and once again you can see that our goal moving through here is going to C, and you can hear this. We get a half step motion B to C going from measure eight to nine. You can hear that it's really gravitating towards C at this point. But when we get to the end, our G sharps take us away from that, and really the emphasis is on A. So in our last three measures, measure 29, we start on this A. And it goes into minor, and we end on A for this section. So it's important to hear where those are going, because they tell us what to think about our musical phrases and where our musical lines are going. Going back to measure 7. Here's one musical idea that you need to incorporate right away. We have a nice crescendo leading up to the F natural in major eight, and then it comes down. And just before we resolve this in major nine on our C, what we want to do, and I put in a backwards arrow here, sometimes backwards arrow, I mean essentially they're retards, but they kind of give me an idea of what I want to do when I'm putting together a piece of music. When I see that backwards arrow, that tells me I want to slow down, I want to decrease my energy, I want to use slower vibrato, and I want to get softer. So sometimes that backwards arrow or the forward arrow, just doing the opposite, can, tells me a lot more than just about three or four different symbols, like an incorporated image in one thing. Now, beginning on measure seven, we can hear how this line is moving up to measure to the F in measure eight, creating energy. But just before we resolve this at measure nine to C, we want to back down and decrease our energy. And then when we get back to our opening motive in nine, it's the same as measure one, then we can take our tempo back and do the exact same thing. B 
Before we get to that point, what we need to look at is those important notes that we give before that. Look at the long notes in major one, the E, the major three, the C. Notice that these are our earmark points. You want to put a lot of very beautiful vibrato on these spots. <laughs> And there's a little accent put here. We want to emphasize it. This sounds like a goal. It hasn't really moved too far because E in measure one, we're still at our same high point. It's not going anywhere. But remember, coming up in measure nine, that E is going to progress up to the F. Here's measure five. And here, it, it starts in measure five, it hits the E, then it goes down a step to D in measure six, but then up to the F in measure eight. <laughs> descending from five to six, but it's growing, okay? When it hits major seven, it's growing and it's moving back up to the F. Now, the next section starting at major nine is really just like the beginning. So think about it and treat it the same. And it, it really grows exactly the same way. If you look at major 13, we have the same little lick here that we had back at major five. F, A going up to the E. But now, Instead of descending down like it did to major seven and then growing back up, it continues on here. Notice I put in a crescendo when we get to this E and the forward arrow. And also notice that you have this accent mark because here at 14, in 13 to 14, it grows and moves into the G, creating more of our tension right away, which is a little bit different than our first time, which, which is good because we don't want to have and hear the same thing. So we get something that's a little bit different. Then by major 16, it comes back down to C and, but it doesn't rest here it, like it did back at measure nine. Here, it continues on, it moves on. Here's measure 13. So you've got to think about not letting it get softer, but you've got to let it grow here. like it's finished. It sounds like we're still in C major and our goal is C, but it doesn't do that. <laughs> 